Welcome to our webinar on productivity add-on tools for Autodesk software, specifically for AutoCAD, Revit, and Civil 3D. Uh, I'm Jesse Thompson. I'm the National Director of Software Sales for TopCon Solution. And um, I've got, oh, let's see, about 58 PowerPoint slides to bore you to death. So let's begin. No, just kidding. I just have like five. So. All right. Uh, so TopCon Solutions, we are uh, the retail division of TopCon Positioning Systems. Um, we're a leader in construction layout, machine automation, or machine control. Uh, GPS products and uh, land surveying and mapping products. Uh, we are a platinum tier partner, award-winning partner, and we have uh, multiple certified training centers across the United States. Uh, we are also a Bluebeam platinum partner, and uh, actually what's not on this slide is we are a Panzura dealer. Uh, our tech team has decades of industry knowledge and experience and are here to help you. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, let's look at our numbers here just to kind of give you an idea of our, our locations. Uh, we've got 13 spanning from Washington to Maine. Um, we cover 21 states, which uh, includes Alaska for software only. Shout out to Chris Kentarzis. Hi, Chris. And we have 180 employees across the United States. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is what we're here to talk about. Uh, TopCon Solutions AutoCAD Civil 3D and Revit briefcases. It, uh, you know, our philosophy behind these um, is to save customers and, and users time and money. And, you know, our philosophy uh, is if we conservatively can save a user maybe 30 minutes a week and times that by 50, 50 weeks, um, you know, that can average out to about 25 hours of production time a year. Um, you know, times that by 50 to 100 employees and you've got significant time savings. And, you know, when I say half an hour a week, uh, you know, that's conservative. We've, we've had instances where we walk in and someone says, I, what you just showed me that you did in two minutes uh, took me days last week. So we've had extreme examples like that with, with some of our tools. All right, and Rob, I have to say, that's really a, an amazing picture. Uh, you look really miserable there. I don't know yeah, where you thank you. that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I've known Rob for, for close to 20 years. Uh, he's been working in the civil engineering construction field for many, many years. He uh, He's, been a trainer of AutoCAD and Civil 3D. Um, and he's currently a customer success manager at iConstruct and he's he's the owner of Kobe Labs. Um, he is our software developer for this product and, and uh, we work side by side with him. Um, you know, we've worked with him for many, many years on, on these products to help develop them with him. Uh, most of these ideas or these uh, uh, product ideas have come from customers uh, just like you guys. So um, Rob is currently, he's based, he was based out of uh, the Portland area, Portland, Oregon area, but uh, he recently moved and uh, Rob, I, you got back surgery and uh, you can't lift anything. So your wife must love you that she's got to lug all the mattresses and all the stuff out of the house. That's, that's a great timing for that surgery. Oh. It definitely was good timing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, without further ado, uh, Rob, why don't you take it away? All right, great, thank you. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Yep, yeah, there we go. All right, <clears throat> so thanks, Jesse. Um, once again, my name is Robert Gadball. I own a company called Kobe Labs, and what we do is we develop uh, tools for AutoCAD, Revit, Civil 3D, you know, other Autodesk products, Plant 3D and stuff. So um, what we're going to be showing you here is the um, TopCon briefcase for AutoCAD, Civil 3D, and Revit. And <clears throat> like Jesse had mentioned, is that we take ideas. Uh, we try to come out with about, you know, between six to eight new tools um, a year for each of these suites. And so we're always looking for ideas for customers. You know, we first built these 
um, you know, for ourselves in house, um, and then started expanding on them. But a lot of these tools are, you know, ones for uh, the customers have given us ideas for. So I'm not going to go through every single tool here. The idea behind this one was I was going to try to show you, um, you know, the top tools, I guess, out of each of the suites, and then maybe show you some of the tools that are coming out that aren't um, up on the ribbon as of yet. Okay, so that's the goal of this. So we're going to start out with the AutoCAD tools. And like I said, Jesse said here, definitely we'd like to see some ideas, um, throw in some uh, uh, questions and stuff like that, or ideas that you might have to win a, a gift card. All right, so starting out here, this is the AutoCAD uh, set of tools here. I'm just going to see if I can hide this. Uh, my panel thing here, hide control panel. There we go. I got more sc screen space here. All right, so uh, this is these are the AutoCAD ones. These are the 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 newest ones. I mean, uh, we came out with these a little over a year ago, I think. So these don't have near as many tools as we get into once we get into the civil side of it or the Revit side. There's a lot more tools in in those, as you can see here. So these are ones that we're building on. Um, one of the main ones here that I you know I want to go through here is this one is the rename sheets. So it's always been a pain. Um, for customers having to go into their sheet sets here and and go through and start renaming these so this is just a very quick easy way um, as you can see down in here i've got sheet one two three four all that stuff if i go up here to go rename sheets this dialog box comes up and i can say hey i really want to start renumbering these from uh you know uh 20 okay and then i want to change the sheet title to say uh uh plan or yeah, I'll go plan here. And then down at the bottom, I can say, can you rename these layouts to match? Okay, so once again, you got your one through six here, you got your one through six, and all I'm gonna do is go this, I'm gonna apply these numbers, and then I'm gonna go okay, and then now you can down, see down in here, you got plan 20, 21, and all this, and then same thing here, okay? Um, and I didn't have to start at the beginning, I could have highlighted from, you know, number 22 here and then renumbered it from there on down. So it's just a real quick, easy tool to help you manage and rename those sheets instead of having to go through one by one like this and go 22, changing this name and so on and so forth. All right. Next tool I want to show you is a create viewpoint. I love this one. Okay. So I don't know how many people actually go through, you know, you got your plan here and you're going to create a you know, usually you'll go like MV here and you create a, a viewpoint, viewport here, and then you're gonna zoom into it. You're gonna click in there and zoom in, figure out what you want, and then you're gonna go down and set the scale of it. You know, that's kind of a tedious way to do it. So, especially if you're doing a lot of them. So if I come back in here, this one here is go create viewpoint, viewport. Uh, so what I have here is your margin. So basically you're specifying exactly where this uh, viewport is going to be created. So I'm saying let's go down two inches uh, from the top, two inches from the left, two inches from the bottom, and then five and a half inches here. Then I'm going to say the layout is I'm going to create a viewport, and then the scale that I want to set this to is one to 50. And once I've created this, can you lock the viewport? Okay, so I'm going to go okay. It automatically takes me into the model. Okay, and this is the viewport that you're seeing right here. At the command line, it gives you the option in here to say, just pick where you want it, or you can go R for rotation. I'm gonna put a rotation on it. I'm gonna put a rotation like that. Now it allows me to say, yep, this is exactly where I wanna put this thing. I click, automatically goes back to my view, and it's already rotated and place it in the right location. So a lot quicker than actually creating the view, zooming into it, coming down and setting the scale. Uh, I'll go ahead and get rid of this. Um, so once I, so that's a viewports. Um, the next one I want to show you is legend. So we have three of them. I'm gonna, just going to show you one of them here. We got block legend, hatch legend, and line type legend. So I'm just going to go in here and let's go. Let's go block legend. Comes up and it shows me every single block that's actually in my model. Now I don't want every single block in there because I don't have every single block in this view here. So I'm going to just uncheck everything, and then I'm going to go in here and just click on this add, and I'm just going to window 
and it's going to grab every single block that I have in this view. So you can see their benchmark and I can give it a new description here. So if I didn't want to call that, I could actually come in here and just say BM, benchmark, you know, give it whatever title you want. Okay. And then it's going to say what style you're using and the title you're going to put onto this. Okay. So I could actually say this is a uh, block, uh, block legend. All right. And all I'm going to do is go, okay. And I'm going to come over here and pick a point. And we can control the scale of it, and there you go. And then this is all about your um, the style here too. So I could easily come in and just say, hey, this is all middle center there. And this works the same way with hatches and, like I say, and line types. Okay, but we can we have full control of, over the size of this and using uh, the style, the the table style. So that's the legends. Uh, then we got a couple other tools in here. Um, we got a lot of different tools in here, but we got selection filter. So you can actually grab a few items in here like this. And I can go into the tool, the briefcase here, and I can go selection filter. And basically it's going in and it just basically shows you every single thing that you have selected. So if you did, you know, if you maybe only really wanted to grab some hatches in here. If I, you know, okay on that, now I've only got those uh, hatches selected. Um, I'm not going to really demonstrate many more of these in here, but basically just to show you the different things that we have, we got, uh, you know, the fillet, uh, a 3D polyline. So you can actually take a 3D polyline and fillet that um, and put an actual grade on that, um, doing 3D offsets, things like that. So some of the new tools that are coming. Okay, so I don't want to take too long in here. So I've got quite a few new tools. Um, and uh, we got four new tools that are coming out, um, which are up in this ribbon. So I wanted to show you this. I don't know if anybody on this call has actually used Civil 3D, but in Civil 3D, there's an object in there called Feature Lines. Well, we decided we're going to create our own feature line inside just plain AutoCAD. Because if I actually create a 3D polyline, I'm gonna just go 3D, 3P here. I start drawing a 3D polyline. Um, one, it's not asking me for the elevation, so I'm just picking, but there's no way to do a curve in here. I wanna put a curve in this 3D polyline. I can't do that in plain AutoCAD. That's the nice thing about using um, a feature line in um, AutoCAD, or I mean, Civil 3D. What I'm gonna do is type in FL, which is, um, our feature line in AutoCAD, which we're going to give it a new name. I can pick a point here, and it's asked me for a starting elevation. I'll go 100 here. And now I'm going to come over here, pick another point. What's that elevation? I'm going to go 105. Now, this is a, a new tool, so it's not actually released yet. And then I'm going to go A for arc. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick over here. And what elevation do I want that? I'm going to say 110. And then I'm in a curve again. I can go ahead and click in here like this. And I'll say that's 120. Okay. I'm just going to press enter and finish that off. All right. So there it is. Um, and if I click on this, you're going to actually see that I've only got vertices here at the start and the end, but this is actually in 3D. Now there's a command here they told me to do here. I'm going to go remove, I think they said. Let's see if it comes up. Remove override. Yeah. So I think it's this one. Room, uh, no, it's not on there. Override, overrule. Nah, I don't know what it is. But anyway, what that would do, basically we've got some overrides on this. They would actually be lots of little vertices through here because we've actually got this thing in 3D. Um, and, but we're not displaying them to you. We're displaying it like you put it in there. There's a curve in this thing. If I would actually turn on this remove over rule here, um, it would actually show me all the different little vertices in there to where I could grab one vertice at a time and move it, but that's not what I want. Next command I want to show you here is the, the editor on this. So if I go here, I'm going to go Kobe. Once again, I don't have any uh, um, buttons for this yet, so i got to use the keyboard here. So it says select your object here. So this is my 3D polyline. Now, the first one I noticed doesn't hold at the moment, so we'll get that fixed. But basically, this is an elevation editor. So you can see here, there's the first elevation there, and I can jump through this thing. And so you can see it is actually in 3D, 
and I can go in here and change the grade on this thing. So maybe I want to change the grade. Let's hold that at 100, but let's just change this to, um, let's go here. Let's change this to a, a negative two, okay? And you'll see now this is at 110, and then let's just change this one to a negative one. And now it's changing that one, and then I can change this last one if I wanted to. But just a quick little elevation editor, so I could either change the elevation here, or I could do here, we have settings to decide how you want to actually look at that. All right, so a couple other ones in here. Let's go uh, PL here, just a normal 2D polyline. I want to do multiple offsets, all right? And so I'm going to go Kobe, and then this one is multiple offset. I'm going to select on this, all right? And I'm going to pick that side. And you just start typing in, what do you want? Like, how much of an offset? I'll say, well, I'm going to go one. You can barely see it there. I'll go comma. I'm going to go, say, 10. You can see how it's starting to come in there. I go comma. I'm going to go uh, 15. I'm going to do one more here. I'm going to go, let's go uh, three, but then I'm also going to go times uh, five. So you see there, I've actually created three of those. And if you wanted to, I can say, oh, let's put it on this side here. And you can turn around and save this. So, you know, realistically, this be like a, you know, road, you can actually quickly say, oh, offset to the gutter, offset to the back of the curb, then to the sidewalk, and so on and so forth, okay? So that's a new multiple offset. And then the last one here um, for the AutoCAD one that is going to be coming out here very shortly is the draw order. So let me just show you something here. Let me just go in here and go in and uh, create myself a donut here. Let's go zero, and then I'll say 50. All right, so I'm going to go in, and let's just place it right here at this location. All right, so you can see how that's over the top of that. So what I can do here, this is a, uh, let's call this one draw order uh, layer. And so, once again, you can create templates, and I'll say, well, you know, what I want on the top is going to be this item here, whatever that is. And I'm going to say, let's add that there. So that's the water line. That should always be on top. And then this one here, I'll say that one's on the bottom here. And I can have multiple ones in there. And I can turn around and save this so I can, you know, water on top or something. And I just go, okay. And now, yeah, see, it's beta. It's not ready yet. But now you can see that line coming over the top there. So at any time now, if I happen to put another one in there that's over the top of it, I could just press enter and then um, update that. So that's the AutoCAD tool. So once again, there's a lot more here. I've just shown you some of the more popular ones there, and but I want to show you kind of the things that are coming, letting people know we're always coming out with new stuff. And the difference between us and a lot of other software little companies out there is you automatically get them. We don't try to sell you each individual new tool again. Um, when you buy the set of tools, anything that we come out with, you automatically get. You're notified that, hey, there's some new tools there, and it's completely up to you whether you install them or not. But we don't turn around and try to charge you for all these five new tools. It's all part of the process. All right, so now I'm going to jump into Civil. all right? So now I'm going to look at these Civil tools in here. So once again, these are a lot more mature. Um, I'm going to show you the real popular ones on the Civil side of it, too. And then uh, we really have a, a couple new tools that are going to be coming out shortly. So one of the, the main ones we have here is our station offset. Okay, this is one of our first tools we created, but out of Civil 3D, you can't add a station offset to a point. Okay, yes, you can generate a report with giving you the station offset, but we want to add that station offset to a point. So it's mainly it's just come up here, you go station offset. You got different ways to be able to select. I'm going to just say, yep, let's go in here and grab these two points in there. It's just 15 and 16. Okay. Which road do you want the station offset to be based off of? Well, let's just do this road right here, which is road B. We do give you the option to select another one. So if you're at an intersection, you can get both station offset. So depending on where they're going to stake it out from. Uh, if I go into settings, I can control the prefix and a suffix for both sides. So it's going to have an L if it's on the left side and R on the right side. I just go, okay, it's basically done. But I'll go over here to annotate. Let's go in here, add a table. Let's go a point table. 
I'm going to grab one in here, station loft set. Let's go ahead and select these points again. So 15 and 16. And I'm just going to go OK. And so here it is. All right. So now I'm going to grab point 16. I think that's 16. Now, if I move this, you should see that update. This is all dynamic. So if I move the alignment, those would also update. OK. So really popular tool. Um, once again, this main reason we came up with these sets of tools is, you know, I do a lot of training with the Civil 3D and customers would ask questions during classes. Oh, can it do this? No, it can't. You know, I know these questions, how they come up all the time. So um, that's why we came up with a lot of these. All right. The next one is grading. This is this is great. Our grading is um, if anybody ever uses grading within side Civil 3D, you'll know that grading is the flakiest part of the product. OK. It does some great stuff, but it does have its issues with it. And those issues really come about because of feature lines and stuff like that. So I wanted a way to be able to grade without having to have feature lines. This is just a normal 2D polyline, but I could have a 3D polyline too. All I'm going to do here is just go over here to go create grading. It says select your entity. So I'm selecting my polyline. Which side? I'm going to go the outside. Wants to know if I want to go all the way around. I do. I'm going to press enter. All right, and you can automatically see it's just graded because we have templates in here. So you can create templates. So I do a lot of grading. That's the exact same thing every single time. It's just a different job, but I'm, hey, I'm doing a pad. I want to go out at 2% and then I'm going to go down to the surface at a two to one slope or a three to one slope. So you can create your templates in here and it automatically starts to grade it. So like I might change this, say, let's go building pad two. That's a little bit different. Let's see what we got. This one's just grade to surface there. Um, so you can pick whichever one you want. What's this pad one do? I usually had one in here with multiple in there, but this one does it. So as you can see in here, I've got two ways of grade. I'm doing an offset and then I'm grading to a surface. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in another one. And this one, I'm going to actually move it up in the list here. So now this one, I'm going to say, let's do an offset and slope. And this slope is, um, what did I have on that first one there? That was at a percentage. So I'll keep this one at a uh, one in. And I'll say, let's do a slope of uh, uh, 10 to 1. Let's go negative 10 to 1. Let's go negative 10 to 1. And it is going to be an offset, uh, say, 5. And there you can actually see it. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's go 10. All right. So there it is. And I have the ability in here to automatically create a grading surface if I wanted to, and then I can come in and specify how I want that graded. So I can go one in uh, one meter and five meter design, and I can go OK, and it's going to go through and create this surface for me. OK, so there it is. Now, this is dynamic. OK, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the surface so you can just see it a little easier here. So let me just get rid of that surface. But you know, I can actually come in here and grab uh, my polyline, just like you have in Civil 3D, and I can start to grade this thing. And as you can see, it, it's dynamic, whatever I want to do with it. Uh, you got to be careful. You're not going to snap to something like I almost did there. And you can see that surface coming back on. I can also change the outside. So here's the, here's the thing I really love about this, is if I decided to come in here and click on this, oh, look at this grip here. Maybe I don't like that grade that I've got, so I can actually just grab this thing and you can just see how dynamic this is. So I'm changing the actual grade of that. So this is all held and I'm going, oh, let's change this to a 10 to one. So I can have multiple, I can have transitions in here. We, we do some crazy stuff with the grading. This is a very popular thing for us. So, you know, um, joining grading and creating the transitions is all part of it. Um, and it's nice because you've already got that surface there. So if I look at this thing here, let's just go into Object Viewer. And you can see it already does the infill for you and everything. Okay. All right. So that's our grading. Um, the next thing I want to show you here is uh, creating multiple profiles. This one I love. All right. Uh, do a lot of... Uh, work for contractors and stuff like that we get lots of alignments i mean jobs with you got intersections you got alignments all over the place and so for me if i had to do this i'm going to basically be grabbing that alignment there i'd be coming up here to create a surface profile 
Okay, so you'd add the surface profile, and I'm gonna do one of them just to show you. So I go add surface profile, I go draw profile view, specify your styles that you're gonna be using, whatever. And I go here. Now I gotta create a finished ground profile. So you select on your, your grid, and then you're gonna come up and you're gonna go to profile creation tools, and you're gonna give it a name, whatever. Sorry, FG. And you start creating your finished ground profile. It's, it's kind of tedious, it really is. So this is what we do. If I come over here, create multiple profiles. There it is, every single alignment, great, okay? Which surface do you want to sample? XG, what layer you want to go on, the style you want to use, what style is it? Oh, it's the existing ground profile, all good. Then um, I'm gonna actually say, what's your profile view style I'm gonna use? I'm gonna say, this is uh, profile view. I'm gonna say just stations only. And can you go ahead and create the finished ground for me and call it FG and then one, two, three, using the design profile and a complete label set. I'm not gonna do stack profiles. You can do that if you wanted to. All I'm gonna do is go okay. And that is a heck of a lot quicker. And you will see that I've already got the design in there. Every one of these has already got the finished design. Now, all we've done is say, go from the start to the end. You know, that's not really probably what you want. But the idea here now is you all you have to do is select on this thing. And now we can go up to geometry editor and you just start modifying this thing. You don't have to give it a name. You don't have to go through all that dialog box. I escape. I'll go ahead and grab this one. Same thing. I didn't need to escape, actually, but I'll do this. So I click on this. OK, so that's all done. And then we could go down and, you know, grabbing on the next one in here. So now here's the next one. You notice that says FG1. I click on this and it's going to actually, whoops. We can now start, go ahead and modifying. Whoops, sorry. Not getting it there. There it is. Starts modifying that. Okay. So that's create multiple. All right. So let's jump back into this one real quick. Uh, a couple other little things in here. Uh, we've got our corridor section editor, um, or actually, let's just do the section navigator because the time-wise, let's go section navigator here. You see this, okay? All I have to do is just start clicking on this and it'll walk me through them. Oh, wrong, wrong set of cross sections. And I can just go in here and just start walking through these. I can change how it looks or regards how close in I'm zoomed. And so I can just quickly walk through all this stuff. Now, some of the things with Sybil, um, this is a small job right here, but what I get is a lot of customers where you get lots and lots of cross sections. And once again, I do a lot of these jobs. I'm looking at this cross section in here and I'm going, yeah, there's an issue here. It's 795. Okay, well, let's go find that and see what's going on in there. So you're going through and you're trying to find this cross section. There it is. That didn't take too long, but when you've got hundreds in here, you're constantly you know, panning, trying to find that cross section. And so what I typically end up doing is I might draw a circle around it so I know when I'm back into here, okay, I know where to go. Well, that's kind of a pain there. So now what I can do is I'm looking at this thing and say, yeah, 795. If I click on that sample line right here, it automatically goes, what do you want to do? Oh, can you zoom to that cross section? It'll take me right to that cross section. I can kind of pan over in here. What's going on here? I click on this cross section. I'm going to say, can you zoom to the alignment? And it'll take me right to that location on the alignment. And same thing. If I click on this, I can go, can you go to that profile? Because I've got lots of profiles in my model. So I can go zoom to that profile. It takes me right to the profile. Okay. Now, a new one, this is one of the new commands that we actually have here, is zoom to assembly. Now, it's not, I don't have a button up here yet. But basically what it is, is you can go in and I can select on one of these sections here and I'm just going to type it in, but I want to go to whatever cross, whatever assembly is being used. I want to see the assembly that is being used at that location. So I go Kobe underscore, this is uh, zoom to assembly, right there it is. And I go there and it automatically will take me to that assembly. Okay. Uh, another tool that we've got coming out is where we're going to also label, we've already got a way to label our, our assemblies, but we're going to label where this um, assembly is being used in a corridor. So it'll come underneath that, it'll say mainline corridor, station, such and such of this, and then so on and so forth. Okay. 
All right, so one other one that I really want to, a couple of them real quick that I want to show here is pipe editor. This is a great one here too. I don't know if many people work with pipes, but if you're going to edit this pipe run here, if I want to set that all at one grade, it'd take me a little bit of time because you're typically going through each individual pipe to be able to do that. You'll see them all over the place here. So what I'm going to go is pipe editor. Okay, I'm going to select, want you to select your first part. I'm going to say that part there. And I'm going to say, let's go clear down to that part there, right? So you can see what this is showing me at the moment. And so it shows me what my starting invert is. My slope is a, says a star there. I'm going to say, let's go 1.7. All right, that's going to show me what it looks like at 1.7 all the way through. Well, what if I had a drop of 0.1 here? So I click on 0.1, and so there's the drop along 0.1. Let's just change this slope a little bit more. Let's go to two so you can kind of see what's happening. All right, so there you go. So this whole entire run now is set at 2% at 0.1 drop. Well, what's going to happen down in here? What I can do is I can say lock everything else downstream. I click on this, and it's going to keep all of that stuff. So you can see the grade isn't changed. All it's done is say take that down. Give me my 0.1 drop and hold that grade all the way. Um, and all I had to do is hit apply and I'll update it. I'm not going to do that. If you only had one to worry about or fix, like this one right here, let's say, I do the same thing. Let's go pipe editor. Okay, I'll say from here to here. That's a one. Let's just change that to a two. Okay, there it is. And then I could say, hey, can you lock everything else downstream from there? And that's you can see with the difference. So that one was going to go up, and then now everything else is just going to hold. So it's holding the grades and the drops of all of them. Okay. All right, last one here in the civil one, and then we'll get jump into Revit, is uh, level service network. I don't know if many people do this. We've had a lot of requests for this, but you know, some people don't take the effort to you know model their uh, house connections and stuff like that. So, but what I want to show you here is. I've got two networks in here. I've got a mainline network and then I've created a service network. And so as you can see there, none of these pipes are really tying into the main, okay? So we got a tool here. So let's go up here and it is right here, level service network. It says, what is your main line? Well, that's the main. What is your service network? It say it's my lateral. It wants to know if I wanna have a vertical offset. I don't wanna do that. And then it wants to set the grade. So what it's going to do here, it's going to take these pipes, it's going to drop each of those inverts down to the actual main line and then set the grade at 2%. Now, if I uncheck this box, all it's going to do then is just take the, the end of the pipe and set it to the invert of the main line. And you have the option whether you're going to do invert, tops, whatever. All I'm going to do here is just go OK, and that's it. Nothing else to click. If I look at this now, you will actually see object viewer. And now every single one of those pipes is now tied into the main line and it's got a grade set of 2%. But once again, didn't have to do that. You could have actually just tied it in there and this elevation would have stayed where it was. Okay. Uh, the next version of this, we're actually adding it so you can control this outside, you could say, oh, make that, uh, you know, two foot down from the existing ground, something like that, okay? So the other the other tool I kind of wanted to show, but I'm, it, it's, it's got a, a little bit of an error in it today, but I do, I'm gonna bring it up just so you guys can see it anyway, because this is a tool that um, I would use all the time, is when I'm generating my plan and profile sheets, I get a lot of profiles in there and they often don't come out looking the exact way that I want. So I'd be manually going through and adjusting different things in here. But here's the new tool that we actually have. And this one is called Adjust Profile Views. And so I could actually take multiple views here. Like I say, I'm not gonna run this, but I just wanted to show you. But if I wanted to, it's like, shoot, I messed up. I'm gonna change the style. So I could go in and change the style to every single one of these. So say Profile View. While I'm in here, I might actually say, oh, sorry, um, I want to actually change this to uh, elevations and stations all the way. And then I can also adjust the height. So I can do an automatic height. I can do an absolute. Um, and or I could just say, hey, I want every one of these to be 30 foot in, in height so they fit onto my sheets. Um, 
it's it's a great tool my old you know this this build you know draws an error in here so I, nothing i can really do on that but it is really cool it's really fast it's really slick uh but this last one he gave me it's um had that error in it but um once again these new tools should be released probably by the start of the year maybe in december anyway okay so let's jump into revit okay and we'll finish this off all right so revit all right well this is the most mature out of all of ours so we get all of this stuff with, with the revit tools and we get all of this stuff so the content admin kit is uh part of it and then we get all of this um we got two new tools in it they're not quite officially released but i'll show you these two here power bi export and clash review okay uh, but before i do that i'm going to show you a couple of our main uh, tools in here so what the our main tool really is our bim query okay this was one of uh, jesse's customers in seattle that kind of requested this thing my guys basically did this thing over the weekend the guy gave us an idea on friday when he showed up by monday this thing was ready to go it's it's matured a lot since then of course but um but that's really what we do so if i jump into this this is a 3d if i go ahead and grab this window all right you can see here it's an aluminum window i want to change those windows so let's just go up here to go bim query um, I could change that one, but I actually really want to change all the windows. So let's go in here, select all those windows, but I don't want to change everything. I really just want to change that casement and that frame type, okay, material. So there it comes up, and in here I can come in and say, hey, what do I want to do? Let's just change it to steel, and I'm going to change all of these to steel. Let's do the same thing here. Let's just change that to steel, and let's change them all to steel. I didn't get that last one. All right, and all I do is go apply and close. What makes ours different than the others is that we don't force you to go out to Excel. If you wanted to go out to Excel, by all means, we have an option in here to say, save it as an Excel spreadsheet. You can make your modifications in it and then bring it back in, open up the Excel spreadsheet and apply and close it. But we're not forcing you to do it. A lot of our customers just said, hey, I wanna make the change right here and now. Let me make the quick change and then update it. Uh, but we can do schedules in here. Um, you can modify your schedules. We can create presets. A uh, new feature that we just added, I had no idea why he did it, but I just ran into a customer that loved it, is color coding. So they were color coding tags. Uh, they had different ways to, that they wanted to color code them. But you know, in the end, all it is is if I just quickly show you again with windows. Let me just grab these windows. I'll just do all the properties in the windows. So see, I've got the types here. I can actually just come over here and go color code. And so these two windows will be colored green and all those will be covered, colored in blue, okay? But any column that you pick, it'll actually color code them based on that column. So if the properties are, are different, then, you know, it'll, it'll color those. So that's uh, that's our flagship tool in there. A um, lot of project cleanup tools. I'm not gonna get into all those. Um, let's go over to imports. Another big one here is import a spreadsheet. So basically what we have is I can take an Excel spreadsheet. Let's go open up an Excel spreadsheet. Let's grab this one. You'll notice here I've got multiple tabs down here. And so what this does is whatever is highlighted, will bring it in to your model but it'll bring it in as a schedule so now if i come down to my schedules you'll see here i've got a schedule here of that data that i just did now we recommend you don't rename it because of the way the tool works so now if i go back to that exact same tool import let's go to it again let's grab the same one this time i'm going to go to fleet and say yeah let's just bring in this stuff from fleet import update and now you'll see here i've got a fleet tab okay okay if you renamed it we wouldn't know how to update it basically okay it's a one-way street right now too you know you can only bring it in you can modify the spreadsheet and update the schedule but you can't change the schedule and update the spreadsheet um let's see what else we got we got a lot of renumbers so if i want to turn around and renumber rooms and stuff i can go let's go renumber room and space uh, I'm going to go numeric starting at one, and I'll just say, let's just renumber that one to room one. Let's go this one to room two, and that one to room three. Good enough. I'm going to escape and close. 
All right, so now that I've renumbered those, the doors are out. See, this says 105, and this is 106A and B. So now we just come up here to renumber by room. I'm going to say renumber all the doors, either to the room or from the room. And then it's alphabetical. And I'm going to say emit the number letter if there's only one of them. I don't want this to be called 1A, but I do want this one to be 2A and 2B. So I just go, okay, you don't have to pick them. It just does it. So there's 1, 1, 2A, and 2B. Pretty popular one. Legends are big too. We can create legends, material legends, or legends of um, furniture, whatever. Um, we're going to come over here to room views. This is the other big one for us. I want to create some views of my kitchen and dining room. So I go room views. I'll go kitchen and dining. I'm going to create, I can create a plan view of it, but I'm just going to create some uh, elevation views. And this is going to be called the name dash number dash then the cardinal direction. Just go OK. And now we've actually just created, there they are, elevations here. There's the kitchen and dining. So that you can do this with any room whatsoever. Uh, we've added a couple other ones in here. Pinning sheets. Uh, uh, we can do, we got viewpoint or uh, sheet manager in here. Uh, but one of the, uh, the main two things that I really want to show here before I run out of time is Clash Review and Power BI Export. So these are two things. They won't be in anybody's release right now if they've got it, uh, but this will be coming out. These have already got icons for it. So let me just go and open up a model. If I have, Actually, I might already have it open right here. No. All right, let me go open this model. Let's see if I can get this one to work. Uh, uh, yeah, why not? All right, so this is just a simple little model that I've done here. So it's got some ducts or whatever pipes going into walls, and I got a steel beam going in here. So this model was in Navisworks, okay? So anybody using Navisworks, they've gone in and done clash detection. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to fix those issues inside Revit. So now I'm going to come up here and I go clash review. I'm going to load my clash file. Uh, right here it is. I think this one's it. And now I can go through and I can click on this and it's going to isolate those two objects. So if you can just imagine having a massive list in here, it's going to be able to go through and isolate those objects that you have clashing. So then you can go in and make those changes to this. Okay. Um, and we use this on massive big models, of course. Um, and uh but we're you know we're looking at the id of the objects and then there's some other things like we're going to be able to do is bring in some orbs so if you want to leave the orbs in there you know controlling colors and things like that but it's a really uh it's something that people have been asking for for quite some time and if they were actually like you've got statuses or assigned to and stuff you can actually take this and drag it so if i find what do i want to do here maybe i want to do these are all uh basically the same thing in here I don't have any, uh, yeah, let's just drag the status in there. Okay, so I've only got one in there, but if you had them all, if I'd already had them assigned to people and stuff like that, I could have actually just filtered that out and said, oh, whoever they're assigned to, drag it in there, and I can see, oh, those are all assigned to John, Rob, whatever. Okay. All right, so the last one really I want to show here is the Power BI. Okay, so this is a brand new one. This one's still very, very early days, but where you can take your model, any model you want, and you can export this out to Power BI. And so you can actually do by a selection, by the active view or by the model, and you can pick what you want to export. So, I mean, I could do the entire thing in here if I wanted to export this whole thing out, and then I would just go ahead and export it out. Once I have exported it out, then I would actually go in and I would find this file, which is this one right here that I've exported out earlier. And I would just double click on it. And this is gonna go into Power BI. And why this isn't officially, officially released, we're gonna be creating a lot of different um, visualizations for people. Right now, unless you know how to use uh, Power BI, it might be a bit clumsy for you. Um, so we want to have some predefined ones and this one's is kind of predefined, but that's really what we're, we're working on to come out with some more of them. So basically down here at the bottom, I've got a 2d option and a 3d. So you can see in here, there's my 2d, 
of this and I can select on objects inside this uh, view and I can, I can get it to isolate it. So there's my kitchen and dining. Um, I can go in and select on a, you know, a certain object even, you know, if I wanted to do just like the table or something. So if I click on the table here, there it is, the table. Um, I can go into my 3D view. Okay, so here's a 3D view. Right now, I think I've only got shown is rooms, but I can also say, hey, can you also turn on level two for me? That's all I'm showing at the moment. But, you know, you can see in here in your categories, I've got, you know, if I want to see casework, whatever I've exported out, I can actually show into this model. And, you know, you can spin it around in here. Um, if I want to now create a little uh, legend here, let me just go in here. Let's create a legend. So let's just, or a table. So I'm going to click on a table here. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. What do you want to see in your table? Once again, this is just my Revit model that I've exported out. I might say the first thing I want to see in here is my category. Okay, and I'm going to take category and I'm going to drag and drop it there. Okay, after I've got my category, I want to say, let's see the name. Let's drag in the name of whatever it is. And then I might go in here. Let's go in and say, I want to see the level it's on. And take the level in there too. It's getting a little bigger here. And then lastly, let's say I want the area. And I'll just drag and drop that in there. All right, so there it all is. But now that I've done that, I can actually go in and start to, you know, filter this stuff out. Say, you know, what I want to do is uh, maybe just show me the casework right now. And so there it's come in and shows me the casework. So maybe I would have had count in there. I can go in and show other items in here. So let's take out that, you know, different things like that. So it's really powerful um, what we're doing with it. You know, once we export it out um, and we'll be creating more of these kind of views so people can change stuff. I mean, we can throw in, you know, changing the colors of how things are actually looking, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. So this is uh, this is pretty early days, um, but we should uh, this should be out in the next release. And I think this one's going to be released next month. The Revit tool should be released next month. That's it for me, I think. I've spoken for about 45 minutes or longer. I don't know. But uh, so, yeah, we'll open it up for any questions that people might have. Um, I can't actually see that. But, yeah, we'll okay. open it up for questions. Um, we do have one question, uh, and it comes from, sorry, I, it's like Michael. Uh, recently version 21, uh, 2021.1.81 became available to replace version 21.1.72. What's changed in that update? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, boy, I, don't, I have no idea. It's yeah. probably well, I can I can check I can check with my team. It was probably a bug that somebody had found. Um, okay. And like say, we're very, very responsive. If if anybody ever, and I, I can't stress this enough, if you find an issue with any tool whatsoever, I mean, we haven't checked every single data set imaginable. If you ever have our tools and you find an issue, please let TopCon know or come to us directly. And my guys will typically have it fixed overnight. Um, but if you don't tell us, we can't fix it. So I can't stress that enough. And I, I mean, our guys will be really, really quick about it. And you will, it might not be an official release to everybody, but I guarantee you, we'd get you a bill within a few days. Okay. Michael, uh, we will get back to you on that. Um, we'll, we'll try to find uh, some sort of release notes oh, on that or was something. That, was that Revit, Civil, AutoCAD? Uh, Civil. Yeah, Civil, was, okay. I, I assume Civil, Michael. I. I I, I know your company and I think you're a civil user. So I believe that's that's what he's looking for. Okay. Yep. Hope to see everyone on the next one, but please feel to please feel free to reach out and thank you again for joining us. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye.